All right, I got a handout for you today. So let's just go over it just for a second, then I'll give you time to do your work. Um, I posted this on Classroom as well. So let me just move that over here. Okay, so at the top, it's just the format of the exam, which you should be really familiar with by now. But uh, one thing that um, that you need to notice is that the majority of the test is no calculator. So, um, so it's like 30 out of it's two thirds of the multiple choice and two thirds of the pre response are no calculator. Okay, you need to be comfortable using your calculator, but you also need to be comfortable without using your calculator. And then just a bunch of things to remember. Um, show all your work. Um, again, they don't really care what the answer is. I mean, yeah, you have to get the answer right, but the work doing that to get the answer is worth more points than the answer itself. Okay, so that's important. Don't round partial answers, like intermediate results. Like if you find points of intersection and you're going to use those points of intersection as limits of integration, for example, don't round them too much. Okay. If you have to round them, then just keep a lot of decimal places and use it that way. But don't forget, you have a store button in your calculator. You can store as many variables as you want, okay? Um, if you can do part C of a free response without doing parts A and B, then do that. Don't skip the whole thing just because you can't figure out how to do part A. And then it says if you need to import an answer from part A, then just make a credible attempt at part A so that you can import that wrong answer into part C and get your, your points. Okay, so that's an important thing to remember also. Um, and then the next couple things are all related. If you use your calculator, make sure you say what you're doing to get that result. You can't just have an answer that's th that you don't explain how you got that answer. They're not going to assume that you did it correctly. Okay, if you solve an equation, Write the equation and then say what the, the solution is. If you use a definite, if you did a definite integral, write the definite integral and then say what the answer was. If you use it to find a numerical derivative, write what the derivative is that you're finding and then say what the answer is. Okay. Um, I just saw a table. Because here an answer without an integral will be not equal to it. So you should say derivative. Uh, don't waste time erasing. Um, just cross it off. Okay, but don't cross anything off until you have something better. Because even if you know it's wrong, if you cross it off, the graders automatically will not look at it. Okay, and maybe there's a point there for taking the derivative or setting the derivative equal to zero. Even if you took the derivative wrong, if you set it equal to zero and solved it correctly, then maybe there's a point in there. So don't cross anything off unless you have something better. But if you want to get rid of something, just cross it off. Don't. Don't erase. It's a waste of time. Okay? And then... Yo. Yeah, absolutely. Bye -bye. Yeah, bye. I, I just, that's how I answer the office. I think that's awesome. I'm just kidding. That was a roll. Oh. <laughs> 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 So, so don't use a calculator for anything except the four things you're supposed to use it for. Graphing, numerical derivatives, uh, definite integrals, and solving equations. Those are the only things you're allowed to use your calculator for. You can use them for anything you want, but those are the only things you're allowed to actually show that you use them for. Don't say, my calculator said that the max occurs at boom. You won't get credit for that. And, and by the same token, if you just say the max is whatever, they're going to assume you use your calculator if you don't have any calculus work to uh, show for it. Okay? So there are limits on your calculator. Um, be sure you've answered the correct question. This is a common um, like uh, multiple choice thing that they'll, they'll fool you on. They'll ask you, 
what's the absolute maximum? And then one of the choices will be the X coordinate of the absolute maximum, which isn't what they're looking for. They're looking for the Y coordinate if they're asking for the maximum, okay? Um, if you're asked to justify your answer, think about what they're looking for. Okay? And every time we go over a free response question, I try and emphasize this. Like, what are they looking for you to say? Like, if, if, if they're looking for the intermediate value theorem, then they're looking for certain things. They're looking for, is the function continuous? And the word, intermediate value theorem. Okay, that's the two things that they're gonna be looking for in that question, <coughs> okay? Same thing goes for, I, I said, like if you're looking for a point of inflection, think about what is the point of inflection? What are they looking to see that you know? They're looking to see that you know that the point of inflection is when the second derivative changes sign, okay? And then again, work alone is not justification, including sign charts, you have to use words, okay? And don't be too wordy, don't be crazy about it. You know, one or two sentences is usually plenty. They don't even have to be complete sentences. Half the people who take this test don't even speak English. Okay? Um, that's not true. This, is, this exam is only given in English, actually. But uh, the English is not their first language for some people. All right. Uh, most common student mistakes. Okay, this is like, I got this off the internet. I didn't make this stuff up, uh, but it's true. I mean, I definitely see this in work that I've created over the years. Uh, first thing is that the derivative is zero if and only if there's a max min. That's not true, right? It's possible it could increase and then flatten out and then increase again. That's not a max min, okay? It's also possible that max mins could occur at a point where the derivative is undefined, not zero, or at an end point, right? So um, that's not true. Same thing goes for second derivative. Uh, second derivative equals zero if and only if there's an inflection point, not true. There has to be a change in sign, okay? And the function has to be continuous at that point. You could have a, a hyperbola that goes like this, and it changes concavity from concave up to concave down, but that's not an inflection point because the function's not continuous at that point, okay? So be careful. This is this would be a point where the second derivative is undefined and it changes signs, but that's not um, that's not an inflection point. Okay. Um, these next two, I haven't really uh, had this problem too often, but the internet says it's true, so it must be true. Uh, average rate of change is just is not is definitely not just averaging the rates of change. It's not that. It's change in y over change in x. Okay, same thing goes for average value. It's not just averaging the two values at the endpoints. It's not that, it's the, the integration point. Okay, this mistake I have seen quite often, volume by washers is not pi times big R minus little r squared. It's pi r squared minus pi r squared, right? Having the square outside the parentheses is not the same as having the square on each term, okay? Uh, don't forget uh, people forgetting the plus C on a, a free response question that deals with a, um, a differential equation. If you forget the plus C, that's most of the points. Like you'll get at most one out of four or one out of five for that question for forgetting the plus C. So don't forget that. Um, number uh, this next one: graders will assume the correct antecedents for all pronouns used in justification. Don't say it is increasing because they're going to be like well i don't know what it is so you're not getting credit for that or don't say don't even say the function because technically everything we're dealing with is a function so you can't say the function like there's only one of them even if it's clear to you that you mean the original function and not its derivative its derivative is actually a function also so you can't say the function or the derivative or whatever call it what it is call it r prime or f of x or whatever it is. So it's actually less writing for you to, to call it what it is than for you to call it the function. So don't call it the function, okay? And definitely don't use the word it ever, okay? Say what it is, because they're, they're gonna assume that you don't know. Um, if the correct answer came from your calculator, the grader will assume your setup was correct. I kind of said this before. Make sure you say what you're doing if you're giving your calculator answer. This is a common integration error. If somebody has one over a function, that doesn't necessarily mean that it's 
your int's integral is ln of that function. Okay, that's only true if that function happens to be uh, like a linear function whose derivative is one. That's the only case where this is true. Okay, so don't generalize that to be all the time. Okay. Uh, and then forgetting the chain rule. People forget that all the time when they're trying to do derivatives. So. All right, so these are things that just look out for. Try not to do these mistakes. You know, look at those uh, those things that I said, don't forget to do these things. And, um, you know, hopefully it helps you. All right, so I'll give you more time. Does anybody have actual questions yet on any part of this handout? I'll help you as much as you need it. So go ahead, get back to work and uh, let me know if you have questions. Okay, let's see. 